Welcome to the second concert in this season's Lee Robin series at New England Conservatory. I'm Cameron Stowe, and I'm happy to share a few words about the music you are going to hear. A program called Forbidden Songs, Jewish Voices Uncensored. Performed by young artists from NEC's Department of Voice and Collaborative Piano, these are one-take, unedited performances recorded live in Boston's Jordan Hall on November 13th, 2020. Unfortunately, there isn't enough time here to tell the stories surrounding all of these songs, the heroism and miraculous turns of events that led to their composition and survival, or the rescue efforts that have allowed us to hear them today. Even without these stories, each of these works is remarkable. But as they are grouped together here, their shared story presents us with one way we might receive them, a context that serves only to amplify their beauty and undeniable power. In the 1920s and 30s, jazz, swing, cabaret, and bold new art music were flourishing as musicians throughout Europe expressed a newfound sense of creative freedom following the end of World War I. In Germany, however, Hitler and the Third Reich were intent on establishing a different view. They regarded these new styles of music as a threat to pure German culture and sought to rid their society of these unwanted influences. Entartete Musik, degenerate music. This was the term commonly used by the Nazi party to condemn this anti-German music. On their list of Entartete Musik, jazz certainly, atonal music, an obvious bad influence. But above all, works by Jewish composers, regardless of style, were labeled degenerate, unacceptable. In 1933, the Reich Chamber of Music was established, and in the following months and years, Jewish musicians were removed from all official posts, and the playing of Jewish compositions was outlawed. Even established masterworks by Mendelssohn, Mahler, and Schoenberg could no longer be played. These and hundreds of other composers had their works banned and their careers ended simply because of their race. The forces, that strove to keep this music away from the light of day are a most harrowing example of the danger we all face when fear, ignorance, and hatred go unchecked. In the years since and today, performances of these works from this period then must celebrate their survival and honor the ongoing efforts to thwart the threats of censorship and oppression. The first half of tonight's program features four groups of these forbidden songs. Some of these composers managed to flee before restrictions worsened. Some, like Viktor Ullmann and Pavel Haas, were imprisoned. But both of these composers continued to create through horrific circumstances, even through the final weeks of their lives. Others, like Kurt Weil and Georg Kreisler, used vocal music as a platform for social consciousness and political activism. Together, this collection of their works makes a program of striking tonal variety that includes songs of lamentation and loss and moments of outlandish humor, sarcasm, and irony. But despite their variety, all of the works featured here contain threads of a historical political voice woven through a personal narrative. These are artists who channeled the conflict, violence, and suppression of their cultural moment into works of art, which are calls to action. As a prelude and postlude to the four song groups in this first half, we will hear two songs composed by Samuel Rosner, a current student at NEC and Harvard. Last year, Sam shared with me a recording of a Holocaust remembrance concert that he had curated at Harvard. His beautiful work with that concert provided the first seeds of inspiration that has led us to present tonight's Liederabend. And finally, a very special thank you to JJ Penna and Damien Frankor Krizik for the weeks of care and work that they devoted in preparing tonight's program.
Schatten, an diesem Taunus Schatten. Und es ist so toll gebärdet. Schattenwagen regt aus den Wolken. 
Thank you.
The second half of tonight's program is Shostakovich's great song cycle from Jewish folk poetry, a work in 11 short movements for piano, soprano, alto, and tenor. This work comes from 1948, the same year Shostakovich, along with several other Russian composers, was denounced by the Zhdanov Doctrine. Shostakovich wrote this piece to express solidarity with Soviet Jews, not only for what they had endured during the Holocaust, but the rabid anti-Semitism in the Soviet Union during the years that followed. The music in these songs is not lifted directly from any specific Jewish source melodies, but the texts are Russian translations of folk texts in Yiddish. The cycle originally contained only eight songs, but in order to lighten the rather oppressive and dark mood of the original set, Shostakovich added the final three songs, which are distinctly lighter and more optimistic. Though the cycle received private performances during the years that followed its composition, political and cultural anti-Semitism prevented its public premiere until 1955, following the death of Stalin.